turn on live transcript. Beautiful. Jason, welcome. Nice to see you, good sir. Nice to see you. Uh, not all of you because you have sunglasses on. <laughs> it's kind of, it's like super bright out here. It's foggy right now. And um, I was really struggling to, uh, to see. So ah, nice to meet with you guys. All right, beautiful. Um, let's see. Uh, so Judy is there. Marianne is not feeling well. I'm just looking around the room. Uh, Kilu has to wait for Michael to join here. Beautiful. Michael, welcome. Forrest, we can't see if you'd like your camera on, but no, no pressure. There you are. Wonderful to see you. Good, sir. All right. Beautiful. Well, thanks for, uh, thanks for being here. Um, what a uh, eventful last couple of weeks it's been. Um, amazing, amazing times. And I was really looking forward to getting to our meeting today and kind of, uh, I'm really enjoying these six week cycles because it's feeling like, um, Miss Judy Bentham was approximately correct in her prediction that these six week cycles would be about the right period for maturing and, and kind of iterating. So um, it's really interesting what happened in this cycle, kind of with a few weeks getting started and then a few um, very strange weeks, the last few weeks that opened up a lot of possibility. So just looking forward to kind of doing our retro today. Um, my invitation, if, if um, some or all of you are willing, would be next week when we start. We're both starting um, our, I guess it might be our fifth, six week cycle. And we're also starting a new quarter. And um, as we ran professional organizations, we would do quarterly meetings where we would sync up on kind of the long term milestone and the pull plant milestones, the pull planning, and then really dial in on the um, kind of three one and three month, three year, one year and three month plan. So I was thinking next week, we might do kind of a light version of that kind of a quarterly meeting if you're up for it, so that we have a really clear um, shared vision going into fourth quarter and into next year. Uh, so I, I may invite a few of us um, or whoever would like to join on just a slightly extended meeting next week to start for, fourth quarter. And um, for today, just really looking forward to debriefing on um, this last cycle and giving some updates and catching up and um, navigating into the future. So um, I'd love to create a lot of space for us to um, just try to process together. Um, we haven't caught up in a few weeks, so I feel like uh, Kilu and I should probably share short updates. And then I'd love to just go around the room and kind of get perspective and alignment from everybody on your view from your mast and then um, spend the, the end of that kind of the integrating and getting ready for our, our quarterly meeting next week. So does that sound like a um, acceptable agenda for today? Any um, significant objections? Anything that anybody else would like on the agenda? Okay, beautiful. Um, Kilu, uh, some of these people have heard and some of these people have not heard about our time in Estonia. Um, for anybody that has not, would you be willing to uh, give a few minute update on our, our time there from your perspective and kind of what's followed after that and just kind of uh, start off the rounds with a little perspective? Sure, and I'm hoping that I'll keep my notes really short and then you can wrap in in the way that you can and I can't also the week that follows where I'm sure that there was some kind of, you know, maybe overlap and synergy with your experience in New York as well. Yeah. Does that work? Because I think it's more useful or valuable if you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we'll go there the next. Yeah, so why don't you talk a little bit about Estonia and any follow-ups you've had and what's kind of started from that and then yeah. I'll weave in New York and then we'll go to some rounds to get everybody's voices into the room. Okay. So um, so the whole Estonia trip came up kind of suddenly and really almost as a fluke because it was an invitation for somebody else, for Graham Boyd to come and meet with me for a day because he lives in Europe. But then he asked, are there other people to meet with? And I said, well, actually there are. There are people that would be interested in what you're doing and started thinking about it more. And very quickly as Graham and I were talking about it, it became clear that it really makes sense for 
Jordan if he were to say yes. And I reached out and he said yes to join. And then from there, even without much effort, I think in popped this idea, this notion, this organic sentiment that one of the reasons why Estonia is interesting is that it's a small country of 1.3 million people that is very tightly connected. And it's very easy to find people across different um, institutions and organizations and spaces and spheres of life. It's very interesting to connect them and to reach out to them. And it's also therefore potentially very interesting uh, place where maybe easily one could build the kinds of ecosystems of diverse but aligned groups and efforts. And so that was kind of the, perhaps the, the idea that we, or semi-formed idea that we walked in with and ended up having meetings and presentations. There was a presentation at the Maine Polytechnical University that's got over 800 views now somehow. They had 60 people in the audience and 150 online and the views keep going up. And where we talked about future capital, but where Graham spoke about his form of building these tightly aligned multi-stakeholder, multi-capital ecosystems where Jordan spoke about the vision um, that, that perhaps we can all resonate with. So I'm not gonna repeat that and more. And then there was a conversation in the room and similar meetings, similar conversations repeated with a member of parliament, with a former minister who is, we had five hour dinner with and is interested in doing something on different levels along those lines. Uh, we met with a, a notable set of folks with a Kriya Yoga master who is very, who's recently published a book about emotional, um, releasing emotional addiction, but really it's a consciousness technique to become more clear. And as it become more clear, it becomes easier to collaborate. So part of the conversations were also about people collaborating with each other better across all kinds of you know, silos and organizations and ecosystems. So on one hand, there's a talk about systems and perhaps doing a national pilot on the level of maybe an organization, maybe a community, maybe nation state of these sort of tightly interconnected collaborative ecosystems that are also highly aligned and have a business component where the business fits. And on the other hand, the conversation about what is the interpersonal and interpersonal thing that needs to happen for people to collaborate and work well together and get over all kinds of problems that seem to naturally arise in those contexts. So maybe that's where I'll hand it out over to you, Jordan. And, you know, I'm sure I'll have to punch out, but maybe you can color in. Yeah, that's perfect. And, and uh, Kilu, could you share a little too, um, even we haven't had that much time to realign. So just um, what's kind of been rising um, since we've returned, I know you and Forrest have done some processing together and you've been having some follow-up conversations with people. So what, yeah. what parts have seemed to remain alive? And, and definitely, the and actually I'd like to ask Forrest to chime in as well. What has, what has <laughs> been so much fun that we had a conversation, uh, our third conversation, each of them, I'm afraid over two hours because it just gets to be too fun and we don't look at the clock uh, of mapping mapping the landscape, map, mapping the potentialities, as well as mapping across the networks of who might be and what might be useful um, endeavors and initiatives to engage in, in, let's say, let's call it the Estonia initiative. On one hand, building a pilot that could be used for the world, both up and down in the developed worlds as well as the developing countries, but kind of in a modular way, figuring something out and doing it as well as to sort of what seems to be there and organically arising. And so this mapping looks very much like it's, we use mural rather than mirror board. They're pretty similar. It's a bunch of stickies, you know, ordered by themes, but the process of getting those themes and getting the stickies to show up and the conversation has been absolutely joyful and delightful. So that's one. I've, I've been also speaking with Graham and kind of considering what might be the next steps. And then, uh, published a couple of articles in Estonian press. And these were, you know, it's part of the business of going there. That I have to commit to doing those, but I have tried to also gently push this view of the world, as well as the importance of doing things this way, as well as the um, personal aspect, because that's less spoken about the collaboration and, you know, people managing themselves. And then uh, I know that there are people waiting for us for next steps 
And those include also, you know, Estonian business school folks. I mean, they're considering on their own, as well as the uh, trend setting or trend analysis organization does trend analysis for the parliament that puts out the reports of different themes of Estonia between now and 2035. They're interested in doing something. And then uh, Jordan and Graham, I'm, I'm assuming that there is continued interest also between the AI and Robotics Estonia Collaborative, which is one of the European Union uh, digital you know, initiatives um, where this methodology could also be used. So there's a number of things up, but for me, it actually feels like kind of a letdown because the energy was so magical and there was so much happening that I miss that. Yeah. Like, no, oh, it's sort of, you know, like my usual life is actually fine and it was wonderful before I left, <laughs> but I miss, I miss that amazing energy and the magic and how everything kept falling in place. And I'll say one last thing, and I, I may have gone a little overboard, at least in the conventional view of the world, but I felt that it was very important. And I was, Estonia is also my ancestral country. And I believe in a very present and highly conscious way of engaging with the present moment, wherever you're at, if you can where you can, you know, I, I can get knocked out of shape and then I can't. But when I can, doing that leads to even more of what feels like miraculous and highly aligned. And so I engage in that way of being particularly in Estonia a lot. And it's when one does that, and I know Wendy Alford, you and I, have, we have spoken about that sort of thing. The, you know, more happens, more seems to come because we're also conscious of it. And now I'm emboldened to speak and bring this more into our daily work, you know, in my life, as well as potentially here, because it's a concrete, practical way of being. It's not conducive to finding car keys in your purse or, or driving well or, you know, practical things if you lean too far into the being present, because practical things, at least for me, get hard. But this was something else that got practiced there that I think is... It's not just abstract, it's not just a meditative practice that you sit alone in, but it's a practice that you can walk in groups with people in engagement, in conversation, in dialogue, and in fact, in dialogue with life with. And that was a big, big deal for me in Estonia. I miss some of that here as well, because I don't have as much cause to engage in, in, in this meaningful way. And whoever it's gobbledygook, yeah. I'm happy to talk more if I can. <laughs> But it's it's real, and it's a it's a way of being that is richer that leads to more productive, uh, in some ways faster shortcutty results and solutions to those problems that are already looking for solutions. Like it literally falls in your laps if you are that way. Yeah, the, um, yeah, it was so evident there. I think it's it's great getting outside of our typical bubbles. And for instance, um, let's say for me, especially to be on my first trip kind of on former Soviet soil with things that I don't understand and a history that I don't understand. And um, if anybody wants to uh, watch an amazing documentary uh, that's very relevant to our times, Kilu had me watch uh, The Singing Revolution which was uh, very inspiring and I watched it on the way over there, but it's um, kind of the amazing story about how Estonia held its heart and spirit through the subsequent rounds of occupation and through early 1900s and World War II and, you know, kind of the US and NATO betrayals post-World War II remaining over under Soviet rule and then being able to sing their way back into freedom. And so it's really inspiring. And, um, but, it's like there's just on what you were saying, Keely, it's like there's no way that there's no way that we could know what's there, especially when we cross those cultural barriers, unless we're so present to each other, right, in both ways and, and allowing that to emerge. And so as we tried to do a good job of that, it, it did feel really magical. Um, okay, beautiful. Thanks, Keely. I, I appreciate that. Um, Forest, uh, before I talk a little bit, a quick update on New York, is there anything you would like to add in from your conversations and digesting with Kilo? I'm sure a little bit. Um, just um, what an amazing uh, delight. And it was really 
um, prompted um, by my kind of um, understanding as many of us have a lot of very significant relationships that might come to bear with trying to move forward an initial project. And then also recognizing we have to find right timing for that. So the kind of brainstorming that Kilu and I did and the mapping and things like this is something that taking advantage of the moment that indeed you know, you went over the connections are there. There's kind of a ripeness potential that changes over time. And so if there's yeah. a way of being able to engage it earlier than later, then uh, that's really where we're trying to put some attention to turn around and say, okay, what is that low hanging fruit that you can turn around and open up a excitement door by making connections with the folks that are actually on the ground doing something, showing success, exactly what they're doing, but it applies to Estonia and to the folks over there and things like that, because ultimately it takes a team from over there to want to embrace whatever this opening is. And so now that starts this dance. The other side for me is I didn't know much about Estonia, so it prompted me to kind of dig in and learn about Estonia. And it, what an extraordinary country, uh, very unique in terms of where it is and very uh, placed in the right place of having been an early adopter in digital to recognizing that the world has really grown up and they don't feel like such an early adopter anymore and potentially even falling behind because of the lack of resources and size and yet opportunities that we see to move again uh, out there. So that's a little bit, there's plenty, but uh, certainly that's one of the things Kilo and I are looking at is wanting to extend the group and continue a bit to try to find what's a good path uh, uh, with your guidance and thoughts, Jordan. Yeah, beautiful. Okay, amazing. Um, okay, I'll give a quick. Um, I'll give a quick overview of um, from my vantage point um, update on on New York and just kind of uh, maybe tying a couple of those threads. So um, just just quickly. Picking up on Estonia because a few people on the call have already already heard some of this, but um, it was magical. It was alive and um, so amazing, <laughs> so encouraging. Um, it felt like we had a again these six week cycles are so interesting to watch. But um, after a couple of formative cycles, it we were reflecting that it felt like there was a little lull in the energy, and then all of a sudden it just like exploded the last couple of weeks with all these new relationships and opportunities um, and so I think I mean just to validate everybody on the call like the the work that we're doing together is really important and needed and um, and it's so amazing to be able to travel and to discover reciprocity and relationship and everything that we can learn and grow from and um, everything that we might be able to offer and and help with too so um, the Maybe a couple of things that that surprised me were the absolute openness and receptivity and immediate connection to what we were talking about uh, about coordination and collaboration and ecosystem funding and new ways of um, creating you know community and legal and governance and different prototypes and different funding mechanisms and how to create all the sustained energy towards um, let's say Estonia's 2035 transformation um, that they're working on. I think they call that the green transformation or the green transition. So um, we got to meet with the Foresight Center that's working with Parliament on kind of the strategic planning across all the different buckets of what that looks like um, between now and 2035. And it was just um, remarkable on so many levels. Um, Kilu mentioned, you know, prototypes that could be replicated. I was thinking about the amount of research and funding that have gone into all these different development systems from mobility to energy to um, elder care to, you know, community and mindset change and all these different things. And that's, that's not getting shared, right? Because it's the Estonia 2035 green transition. I was looking at it just going, man, this would, this would take 
years and years and years to replicate. And what a powerful opportunity if we can start cross pollinating all these not all the knowledge that all these different groups and countries and think tanks and everybody are doing. So it was just another example of how much work's been done. And maybe uh, Kilu posited the question, what if we're further along than we think we are? And uh, I kept thinking that when we were there, it's like we, we might be further along than we think we are if we can just get everything connected up. Um, another really key thing that um, that kind of surprised me and came up was um, there's an incredible opportunity there. Um, in particular, I think with the Artificial Intelligence and Robotics Institute, there's going to be 200 or so of these um, advanced technology kind of uh, innovation centers, let's say, um, funded by the European Union. And something truly extraordinarily happened with the one in Estonia because they were getting started as one of the earliest ones. COVID hit, so the EU funding was delayed. But the Estonian um, government went ahead and funded that first year. And so as it turns out, they're kind of out ahead of the proliferation of the rest of those 200 just with, um, I think, fairly incredible positioning because of the inherent Estonian spirit and culture that's there, um, you know, as well as their jump start on the rest of the EU. So that was really interesting. And then um, tying those into, into New York last week, um, New York was extraordinary. It was another um, it was another magical week of um, just absolute back to back to back to back, you know, um, wonderful connections, amazing aligned people, um, more allies and great people out there moving than I could have imagined. So again, just so encouraging and so many aligned people, so many people wanting to collaborate. Um, and, and again, the, the issue that kept coming up was like, okay, how do we connect and collaborate across these different nodes that we're working on? So same thing that that we've really been focused on, on what that patterning is and what the processes could be and how can we connect up kind of that network of networks. Um, so all that that legal governance, I guess, program management stuff was at the forefront, um, specifically as it relates to how we share information and re resources across the groups. Um, other, other key threads were there was a... Um, amazing and delightful network of um, women space entrepreneurs there. So there was um, several female heads of um, space companies that are, uh, that are working with different countries around the world on how to promote kind of STEM education and engagement in, in space, um, especially from the perspective of getting female representation there up from its current 2%. Um, but they have a very well connected network of key leaders in the space industry that were um, delighted to talk about collaboration and how to support. Um, as we talk about ontologies like the UN SDGs, one of the key topics was that there's not a there's goals for, you know, stewardship of life in in the water and life on land, and there's not a goal for stewardship of life in space. And we're already starting to kind of. Um, pollute and mismanage the uh, the space that surrounds our beautiful planet. And so that was a, a really interesting theme. That theme was also connected out to, um, to projects in Saudi Arabia, UAE, and Africa related to space industry and developing nations and um, the role that in particular women might be able to play in getting um, getting the space industries off the ground with this with the proper stewardship and values and all those things um so that was kind of an interesting tie-in with some of the the ai and robotics and innovation stuff in estonia and, but it was another pull to kind of this leading edge forest i think your work um and your careful time and attention you've been paying on the web web3 stuff and ieee and the protocols you know it's all that same kind of stuff of how we how we establish the standards for stewardship of all these advanced technologies from space technologies to ai to robotics to you know web3 and all these things that are going to really be the powerful tools that shape life um so all that was kind of blazing strong um and all that i think is fairly underrepresented in ontologies like the sdgs so there was Kind of this powerful, powerful pull on the, the tech and AI and Web3 and space and all those those advanced sides and groups wanting to participate. Um, let's see. 
so as I sit with this, I think we have, um, you know, when we when we started this after some social dimensions work in March and April, and then kind of uh, shooting a email out to 60 people to say, hey, who might want to follow along and play with the idea we're working on something bigger than any of us can individually handle. Um, through a couple cycles, I think we've now hit like this big expansion where, you know, the size of people that should be on our emailing list that are interested is roughly doubled. And um, it's going to take some changes to, you know, structure and leadership and resourcing and media meeting rhythms and communications and all that to figure out how to meet that. So I think that's the biggest thing that I'm I'm just feeling is that it's like we're we're getting ushered through these potential opportunities to serve in bigger ways. We're going to uh, need to develop the resources and structure to do that. Um, I'm a thousand co percent <laughs> committed and certain that everything we've been moving towards is like more needed than ever. Um, and so I just want to navigate together in the best way. So that's maybe some of my updates. Um, the last thing that that I'll share is, um, you know, we've been working with different uh, different groups on potential UN partnerships, et cetera, you know, around funds and contests, et cetera, around the global goals. Those conversations are all uh, advancing. It looks like um, should we be able to figure out legal and governance? We have, you know, we have very we have surprisingly high level support around those things, uh, and. It's, it's all brought up the same issue that we've been working on, which is that like the issue is how we work together. And very specifically when it comes down to like, where are we writing checks and how does the governance work, right? Like the specifics of legal and governance and structure. Um, and so we're working through those details. And as, as we work through those, um, I'm feeling like, I'm feeling so grateful for the abundance of opportunities and so determined that like we have to hold absolute integrity around this emergence and like right relationship and the right structures of all this. Um, and so that can make things feel like it goes a little slow. And I think that slowness and care with the integrity of every step of governance and structuring is going to be kind of what a, a big part of whether this succeeds or not. So those are some updates around there. All right, check. Um, so those are some updates. Um, let's go around the room. Does anybody have any key questions? I suppose you have your hand up. Let's take a couple, any questions or things that are live and then I'd love to just um, do a little talking stick round and I'd love to hear from everybody in the room, get your perspective on what's happening. Forst? Sure. So a, a couple quick comments in terms of uh, what you've shared so far. Um, um, and also another direction to think about that hasn't really been in the conversation for myself or some others. And that's in the area of recognizing that around the planet in the U.S. and probably maybe in uh, Estonia and stuff, migration is going to become, climate migration is going to become a big deal. Yeah. And does that fits with disaster preparedness and disaster recovery. So that means there's also going to be a lot of uh, specific funding that's already available and that's moving into those areas. And the people that, a uh, few people I know, George Arbellian being one, very knowledgeable there says that those folks are largely unaware of all the kind of stuff we're talking about because they're within their own silo. So that was one of the things. And then the other thing I might uh, put out for your consideration, uh, you mentioned that uh, there's a we that's working on uh, those details you're talking about. And if you felt comfortable uh, just mentioning who the people are that's within that pod of the we. Um, that would be the other thing. I'll hold any of the other stuff till it rotates back around later. Yeah, yeah, thanks, Forrest. Um, I'd be um, delighted if you would like to be part of the we working on those things. Um, and uh, Bill Larson and I have been primarily working on the, the mechanics of those potential um, potential agreements um, with, Great, with the other parties involved, yeah. 
but if, if you'd like to stay more in the loop on that, you'd be happy to. Yeah, the um, that's that's maybe another big theme is there's um, a growing number of pattern watchers very concerned about what might unfold over the next twelve months in terms of um, hunger and migration and um, economic. Let's let's say the total set of impacts arising from how we have disrupted supply chains and then had this war uh, in Europe and how that might further destabilize systems leading to um, some disasters that could force a lot of um, migration pressure, which often leads to additional conflicts um, and, and destabilization. So Forrest, I think your, your intuition on that becoming a big issue, both the, it's like both the migration and the root causes that are giving rise to that desperation to move um, are gonna be a really part, big part of this. It really hits also with refugees and it hits with the uh, needs to deploy systems that I'm aware of that could be deployed that um, rapidly enable the people to learn how to make their own food, to do it on site, to uh, take care of sanitation. I mean, there's all the things that happen when that's yeah. happening. Um, that's really missing infrastructure at most of the uh, government levels. They look at refugees in an in a inaccurate view, I think, not from a compassionate view. Yeah, so Forrest, one of the big, one of the big topics that, that seemed also resonant was this idea that um, so many of us have, are either carrying ourselves and have created or have extensively researched these different um, elements of like the prototype that would be needed. Um, and so we think about any hard hit area of crisis, there's all the basic needs and problems that need to be met. I think in our network, we have a reasonable handle along those solutions. I know that in my own mind, I can name them all. Um, and we don't have those, I think, in writing anywhere as far as that total stack and how they could be deployed. Um, even going to our last couple of conversations with, with Jane and other people on the community engagement side of all that. So from the, the dialogical standpoint of how you even start to engage a community in crisis to get empowered towards solutions to then being kind of waiting in the wings with that total set, um, I think that would be a high leverage area we, we could spend some time and try to pull that solution stack together. Then it's basically just working with each of those groups to go, okay, if we wanted to prototype what it would look like to take this total stack into an area, you know, what would that look like? Uh, we actually have a fast track on that because George Rebellion has been building that stack in links and names and relationships. It's now up over maybe 40 or 50 pages uh, organized yeah. into the stacks that they should be organized into. So that's available as a starting point. I've got that, um, that's his, uh, I forget what he calls that PDF, but I've got that PDF, um, so. Well, it's often being updated. So we just updated at the time and it's ready to activate, yeah. Okay, beautiful. Okay, so Forrest, that, that's a potential action item that you and I could take with anybody else that was interested if we wanted to. I'd be happy to spend time with you, but we could start with um, your list and my list and George's list and just kind of forge something into shape and get it out for the group then to add to. Uh, so if, if you were willing to do that, I'd be happy to collaborate on that together. Sure, that sounds great. I would say that it would be great to have support of somebody that's gonna really be putting it into the right kind of wiki or document or whatever the method is to figure that out before we dive into the actual work of it. And then we might be able to organize it and, do copy paste other kinds of things that would move it along fairly quickly once we have a clear plan on it. I'm there. Yeah. All right. We might be able to find a wiki master and in information maven somewhere if we looked really, really hard and figured out how to. Uh, Make it a nice reciprocal thing. Okay, beautiful. We love you, Pete. Okay, Judy. I guess I just have a question of 
how we want to contemplate, organize, and then manage the explosive dynamic of what's occurring because it's clearly beyond the scope of the 15 or so of us that are regularly on the calls. And in order for it to be effective, we have to have a process for engaging in information transfer and a bunch of other things with sometimes massive agencies at federal levels in different countries or somewhat less messy in state level or local communities and metros. It's just, it's such a massive dendritic process in terms of the need for the change that needs to be facilitated. I'm wondering how we can contemplate the most appropriate role for us to play and the extent to which we can directly or indirectly respond. I'm thinking a lot about um, resources we have close to access to from the, so, so first of all, I think um, we're gonna need to get these efforts resourced, right? Because they're they're obviously beyond anything we could contemplate with our little part-time volunteering. So we can be encouraging and share knowledge and all that good stuff. But if we're gonna actually engage some of these, they need to be well-resourced. Um, I'd, I'd love to know how this lands against what you're saying, but there's, there's an amazing set of resources um, that I've grown to know in the architecture, engineering, construction industry around program management, which just do that. If there's a large complex program of, of action, you have very solid processes for coming in, sorting out stakeholders, identifying goals, backcasting those, analyzing current conditions, and kind of setting up the program of action, information and communication flows. And so my my best hypothesis so far and the best place I've ever seen that done is where I spent the last 20 years and I'm sure there's there's other better places, but I, but I think if we got these, um, if we could get a couple of these prototypes resourced, that that would be kind of how I'd start by approaching that. I think Judy, by getting some, getting some real world, world-class program management support on and just kind of rolling it through the process. Uh, and, and that all kind of syncs up very closely with the, integrated delivery, the Lionsburg integrated delivery work we've been trying to bring together over the last uh, over the last few years. <clears throat> Jonathan. Um, recently, we had a social architecture meeting in which we realized that we can't really do a lot of work until we know what Lionsburg is and the Meta Project is. Um, so I'm thinking some very first steps might be to tackle that missing piece. Thanks, Jonathan. Uh... I agree. I've been um, been thinking a lot about that. I think we've. Um, I think I have maybe done a little bit of a disservice by not doing a better job sharing all all the pieces that are there and present and immediately actionable um, because it, it gets too vague. So we have a an amazing core core base that needs to be activated. So, so Jonathan, I've been thinking about that too, about as we start this new cycle, another round to reset and be extremely clear on all the pieces we have in play, kind of the lifetimes of work that are at the table, what we have to work with. And, um, and then next, I mentioned to you next week, maybe we'll do kind of a quarterly meeting to get, get clear on some written three-year targets, kind of one year, one year plans, and then down to to specific quarterly actions. So I think if I um, were to bring some of those pieces together and then we did more of a standard quarterly meeting, we'd have a, a solid written framework to work from. So does that, would that kind of address the need you're bringing up, Jonathan? <clears throat> Too soon to say, <clears throat> okay. I hope so. <laughs> um, we're raring to go. So yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. we need some ground to stand on. Okay, I will. Um, you're, you're welcome to hold me accountable for satisfying your definition of ground to stand on. Um, 
So, so let's get through a quarterly meeting next week if you're missing any ground to stand on or if the way that I'm explaining it is too complicated, um, you can be in charge of helping simplify and make it firm. Uh, Deal? Agreed. Deal, All dude. Right. I love it. Bye. Thanks. All right. Wendy? Okay. Um, I've heard a couple of words pop up in the last few sentences. So um, if, and I'm just going to float these words out because I think we need a lang language and structure. And Jason and I have spoken about this in his last couple of posts in chat. Um, I think reflect that conversation. Um, not so. I'm I'm talking Canavan framework, but I'm going to throw some of these words in. The entry point to um, our meeting today was uh, around the energy, which was almost chaotic in some ways, but had a sense of order to it. You know, Estonia UN, but it wasn't really explicit. Do exactly X now, okay? So in the energy and and the sense of possibility is somewhere between being chaotic and being complex because you've got all these moving parts and they're all going different directions. And it's not that there isn't any synergy between them, but it's not particularly apparent. And it won't be until it's historical and even then open to interpretation. So that's sort of a mixture of chaos and complexity. And then we've got the just do something now, you know, what's our low hanging fruit? Forrest was talking about that and others have. What could we execute now that is relatively clear and um, gives us a sense of, well, at least this is possible. And then you just use the word complicated. There are some things that are you know, bound by legislation and other things. So here's what I'm saying. I think that we lack a way at the moment of identifying which type of domain each of the things that we're trying to handle is coming from. And what Judy's talking about is, you know, you, you and Judy, I'd like you to clarify this for me, um, is you can only impose so much structure on humans when the, the things that attempting to work with have those different characteristics. And if you try and impose order on the chaos one or order on the complex one, it just squirms out some other way. And there are some things that are just complicated. You just need to know how the financial system currently works and not break rules because you create huge governance problems and lacks of trust and lack of trust is somewhere else. And, and onboarding people, that's, you know, it's partly complexity. You've got to meet them where they are and invite them in. You can't just say, I sent you an email, why didn't you come? Or you came, but why didn't you stay? There's no clear answer to that. The, the motivations are behind. So my proposition is, and on the back of all of that, we need a theory of change as well, because you can't apply this apply the same systems to each of those domains. And you can't you have to think about what type of change is possible in each of those domains. So we have to be and th there's two th things I propose. One is a is the caution of treating everything as if it has the same properties because if you treat a complicated thing as a simple thing you only get into trouble and um, sometimes with chaos you just need a little bit of order and i would say there's a little chaos in our group here in terms of what our intentionality is so my proposal is that we double down a little on getting the language of you know complicated complex clear chaotic at least better down and start to recognize what can't be treated with the same recipe and what needs more subtle, longer term things and recognize the motions and movements of things. You can, if you are aware of that, move things between domains. So something is clear, once you know all the rules, you can shove up into complicated, make a system around it, do, do planning and make it happen again and again and again. Sometimes people are breaking those rules because the rules weren't good and they're doing sideways things to make the stuff happen that needs to happen and you don't know what's going on and then it gets totally messy. <laughs> so we need to be aware of those things. So um, a change, change theory of change is not just a theoretical thing, it's a real practical thing. And we need to understand what the qualities of the issues that we're dealing with. In, and I'm just saying can Evan Framework would help with, and I, I proposed with Jason that we could do a short presentation on that just to give people a language to say, oh no, actually this is messier than it looks and deal with it in a different way. Because it's the hammer and nail thing, you know, everything needs pool planning 
is great for complicated things, maybe. <laughs> anyway, there's an offer in there and the offer is let's, let's double down a little bit on the language of what we're dealing with. Some things are straightforward, some things are not. And if we treat everything as having the same qualities, we'll get into trouble real soon. We probably already are there a little bit in terms of what's said and what's not said. Not serious trouble, but scale brings trouble or trickiness if you haven't paid attention to these things. Okay, beautiful. Um, so Jason and Wendy, I would like to accept that uh, concrete offer on how to keep us on track. Um, so would, would you guys be willing to, um, would like, if we blocked 15 to 20 minutes of our, our meeting next week for you guys to give us an overview of what you're thinking and just some opening frameworks. Would that be a good, or what, what would you like? Jason, feel free to come off mute and chime in here. Yeah, the, the, just the one thing I was gonna say, build off of Wendy was, um, so I was, I've was i been thinking for years about a taxonomy of problem solving, like all problems are not equal. And then the tool sets needed to address those problems. And then I fell into the Canadian model. Um, and then I use the Canavan model to start saying, well, wait a minute, there are different ways to approach. I call it approach or address problems because you can't solve a bunch of the problems in the Canavan model. You can only address them. So yeah. how you do that's slightly different than integrated lean project delivery on some parts of the problem. So it's, it's understanding which parts need what energy mm. and what approach. So anyway, that's, so that's, I think something, and I would, I think I will, I'm going to be color commentary to, to Wendy's awesomeness on whatever we do. So I would defer to her related to like the amount of time that would probably be necessary to um, assist in talking about this model. Um, and just finishing um, and brief here, it's possible to link um, where the energy is in this system. And I keep on talking about energy in a way that you can actually see what is actually dropping into different um, domains. So something that you thought was actually ordered and organized, and I will defer completely to Jason's expertise here in, um, you know, Qatar and other things, you know, this, <laughs> there are things that you've, you've done in a production system that I would never be capable of doing, but I'm very good at recognizing when, when parts of the system need to be handled differently and the science of narrative it will help us a lot here to track when something's shifting that we just didn't realize and get to it sooner rather than later. Um, so there's science to tracking this that you can then say, no, this is something we need to impose order on versus this is something that we need to understand is turning into something else and we're not quite sure what yet, but we're going to track it and manage it in a different way. Um, okay, beautiful. And Pete's had his hand up for a while and so has Wendy. So, yeah, sooner rather than later. Otherwise, we'll go all over the shop. Yeah, let's go Pete, then Wendy, and then, yeah, let's go Pete. Um, thanks. And um, Wendy, I, I appreciated uh, what you, you brought in uh, with terminology. And thank you, Jason. I kind of wanted to touch back to what Jonathan said um, about our social architecture call yesterday. And um, what he said is we realized we can't really do a lot of work until we know what Lionsburg is or what the meta project is. And I, I, I said as much on that call. I think a, a couple of us did. Um, uh, Jonathan suggested that a, a path forward is to figure that out and then we would know what to do. Um, uh, it's not clear to me that that's the, 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 it's not it's not clear to me that that's the clear path forward um, because I'm not sure that meta project is at the place where we can say what it is yet um, so I want to make sure that we avoid rushing to overdefine something which is still emerging um, and use that as a way to work on something that we can't quite work on yet um, Uh, I and and that reflecting on that makes me wonder. Um, I think one of the I I'm maybe all of us, many of us are. I'm I'm a little frustrated 
um, uh, we seem to work, we seem to be doing a lot of work or a lot of activity. We have a lot of activity at kind of a meta level. Um, we haven't done very much practical work. I'm okay with that, except that I feel like we're trying to get to practical work by doing more meta work rather than just saying, yeah, we can't do meta work right now, or it doesn't make sense to do meta work right now. And maybe we should just do some practical work. Um, I think maybe that's a path forward to, to do some very specific project things that aren't, you know, that, that are in the forward direction, the forward path of meta project, but aren't developing meta project of two or three or five years from now. Um, uh, uh, I'm certainly one of the people um, who sees meta project two or three or five years out. Jordan, I know you do, and I know a number of us do. Um, and I can predict a lot of what we need then. Working to build that right now is sometimes premature. And, and I think we drive ourselves a little bit to distraction um, doing that. Um, even things that are, that are pretty obviously straightforward that we will need, like a directory of projects or a directory of people, uh, we're overbuilding right now. Um, because we don't know what we need, we don't know what we want, we don't know why we want it, we don't know who would use it for what, when. So all of those open loops in definition of what we need create kind of a frothy environment for people like me, <laughs> maybe yeah. people like Jonathan, people like Vincent, to go, ah, I could build that <laughs> and start building it. For a directory, maybe we just need a spreadsheet um, or a Google Doc, or a HackMD, I would prefer. But And for a directory of people, maybe all we need is a Google Doc. I don't know. But we don't have that even yet right now, because we've been so excited about what we could build rather than you know what we need for this week and the next week and the week after that. Um, I said a lot. I'm going to say one more thing, which is a little bit separate. A thing. Uh, we had an interesting call yesterday. Uh, the social architecture crew was trying to, we started to compost a call from two weeks ago. I wasn't around to make the call a week ago when it would have been better to compost it. So anyway, reading the notes from two weeks ago made me remember something that I said back then that, that still makes a lot of sense for me. Um, it's that uh, we, don't, we don't spend a lot of time hanging out together. And so it's, it can feel frustrating to get together for an hour and a half in, in Zoom space and have a lot of plans go on and then, you know, not know what's going on for a week and then yeah. do the same thing again. Yeah. So spending time together, there's, there's kind of two, time, two, two kinds of spending time together for me that, that humans like, that humans enjoy, that humans need. One of them is kind of just hanging out and learning about each other or having a little bit of fun together or chit chatting or whatever, right? Another kind is um, finding a task that needs more than two pair of hands, one pair of hands, and needs a few pair of hands to all work together on um, and confronting challenges together and arguing about, you know, which way is the right way to do it and congratulating each other when we've got, you know, um, 100 linear feet of ditch dug, um, or, you know, um, three hours of meetings transcribed, or whatever the work is. So, I, I, I you know, I, when I first was thinking about this, oh, so we don't spend enough time hanging out, um, and just enjoying each other's company and talking about the weather or talking about, you know, what's fun or what, what, you, what you've been doing, what you eat for dinner or something like that. Um, the, the kinds of work are kind of interchangeable. Um, I think most of us here, and certainly me, there's, there's a work has a bad connotation for a lot of people because they do work that they're forced to do, not that they enjoy. I think all of us are pretty mature enough. We've learned that work is fun and fun, you know, it's fun to do work. Um, so I, I, I remember that, oh, we don't actually have to hang out and just shoot shoot the, the ball. We don't have to do that. Um, we could be working on something together, but then it needs to be something meaningful, right? Something that we can say, 
you know, we spent four hours together on this this week or this two weeks and look at what we've accomplished and yeah. let's just keep doing that and do more of it. But yeah. I, one of the things that I, that, so it, it's a reminder for me that it's frustrating to feel like we're not getting anything done, but in reality, we haven't spent that much time together. And if we spend more time together productively, whether it's, you know, entertainment productivity or, you know, work productivity, I think we'll feel our, our blood pressure and our, and our, and our frustration will, will relax because we're doing something together and, you know, being productive together. Thanks. Let's go to um, Wendy and then Pete, um, if you'd be willing to think about how, if we were to have a little hypothesis on how we could, what, what we could do better to facilitate what you're talking about concretely so people would know how to engage in that and we would know how to engage in it together. Um, I'd love to come back to that, what you just said. Wendy? Um, I've had quite a few thoughts as I've been waiting in the queue. A lot of people have already voiced them. So I just want to say thank you to people who are voicing them in the room. So I'm going to try and add on instead of repeat. Um, I, I think the best way to encapsulate everything that I'm thinking is along the lines of this group and the people that are showing up regularly being a model for what we see needs to happen in the world. So the Estonia Initiative is amazing and your connections at the UN are amazing and uh, the Ghana project is amazing and right, all this is really exciting. And, and I think a lot of us can see how collaboration is on the edges of everything everybody wants and so is an enhanced directory and so is um, a knowledge network and so is you know all these other things that we are hoping to create. And we are struggling to do that just for the people in this room, <laughs> right? I think we would learn a lot. So this idea of picking a smaller project or in some spaces I've voiced in the past, you know, picking an experiment to run through, how, whatever words we wanna use, it's picking off, you know, is slicing off something and saying, we're gonna focus on this and practice with it. Give ourselves yeah. the freedom and the abundance feeling of practicing on something that if we fail, it's okay, right? And that the fail feels minor and not like a failure because we just learned and we picked our, you know, we kept going instead of feeling like there's so, so much at stake. Um, now, this doesn't mean that in parallel, we couldn't also be, and you know, percolating the other relationships and inviting the right people in. I just am feeling, um, too like too many threads are going frayed and the energy is not the energy of individuals and the in-between meetings i think this is kind of what pete was getting at if i if i caught his the vibe of what he was saying right the energy dissipates too much during the week there is not enough cross communication between us there's not enough focused attention to help us pick priorities there's no group to go to to get feedback or realign when new issues come up or when you know new thoughts come in or something else emerges. So that's telling me we need a structure, we need governance right in this room first. So that as we start to add on the decentralized pieces um, and more of them, they, they have somewhere to go. They, they're gonna struggle with the same things we're struggling with refocusing our, on our, our energies just externally from this group, I think will be a distraction for a little while and then will ultimately fall apart because there is no backbone for them to align themselves to um, either in big or small ways. So that's of concern to me. Part of that backbone isn't just structural and procedural as I will echo what Pete was saying. It is, by, is, it is actually even more important that it's the connections in this room because this is gonna be hard work and what is gonna motivate us all to keep going in spite of how hard it is, is that we love each other and that we're here for each other and that we've got each other's back and that we'll be there in the hard moments. And sometimes, you know, four of us will need 
a particular attention because of one particular project going on and the rest of us will come, will swoop in to support and vice versa. And we will need, we'll need that. And also a recognition for you, Jordan, playing, having been at the forefront and at the edge here for so long, I'm eager for you to share the weight of what you have. I've yet to hear what is it really that line, I mean, I'd love a presentation from you when you feel ready. Um, what is it? What is the piece? I don't still don't understand what is this piece that Lionsburg is be, going to be offering? And what is this um, emergence with future capital? What is that really looking like? Even if it's just in its emergent stage, it helps me understand how to align the pieces, even in these early, early manifestations. Um, it helps me put my energy in the right place. So again, echoing what Pete said and what was spoken into the um, social architecture meeting yesterday, the energy is dissipating while it was growing for you on your trips. It was dissipating on yeah. this end because there was no feedback loop. And you're yeah. right now, just an observation, this isn't criticism, but you are the feedback loop right now. And we need many more, <laughs> right? Yeah. So we need a core group that, that is responsible and has accountability to different pieces so that there's movement um, regularly. Um, so that, and, and speaking to, I've forgotten, I think it was Forrest who said, you know, there are so, there's so much waiting right in the wings, but if we draw it in at the wrong time, if, especially if the time is really wrong, we can get all excited about what they have to offer, but the energy is just going to dissipate because it's the wrong time. So again, we need a core backbone to help provide a rhythm, to help provide a, a consideration and mindfulness over inviting these pieces in at the right time when we have the bandwidth to include them or consider them or give feedback to them or whatever, because otherwise these pieces are just sitting. We, we, we it's too much. Thank you. Thank you, Wendy. Judy? Well, I'm trying to, I've been sitting here writing myself notes on how to formulate what I'm trying to say or communicate. I think we're all excited and drawn to the opportunity that exists to make meaningful contributions to the many, many problems that the world is facing. But it would be um, impossible for a group our size or even a thousand our size <laughs> to meaningfully address that in a systematic way without having shared levels of awareness and communication because it can devolve into chaos and almost to feudalism if we're not careful because things will start to seem to be competing with one another when they're actually doing the same thing in a different context and therefore in a different way. And so there's a process of communication where I actually wrote in the chat, um, I'm kind of feeling like I need more communication, not less. So shifting to quarterly or less frequent meetings is somewhat concerning because so much is changing so quickly that even keeping up with what's happened in the last three or four weeks is a little bit of a challenge. And, and we're not yet at the maturity as a group or a team to sort of blindly trust without knowing. And even if we did blindly trust, because we do trust, and I think the trust in this group is extraordinarily high, if we're trusting but have the wrong information, we can still do things that are destabilizing or not helpful to the situation that we're approaching. So it, it, it feels to me like we need to find a, a magic balance point that combines wisdom and action with evaluation and analysis so that it can be constructively better each time we try to do something and that has an umbrella over it of the incredible diversity of the groups that are actually going to be the feet on the street implementers. I mean, I think about Estonia as a great microcosm. The metropolitan area of the Twin Cities is about six times the size of Estonia and getting them to agree to do anything as simple as fixing sidewalks is sometimes challenging. So there's some things that are more possible with small groups than bigger groups but these problems are so big that we're going to have to figure out how to interface with not individuals, but agencies and major organizations that are working in this too. And so I'm struggling with, you know, I have energy, I have some competency, but how do I really help? Because if I can't really help, 
I'll get frustrated or overwhelmed. And so I think we're at a, a very pivotal point in our own internal social dynamic because yeah. we've built empathy and sharing amongst this team. And some of us have another 50 people we could reach out to, others have another dozen, some may have thousands. I don't know the scope even that each person could reach, but how do we do the right kind of dendritic expansion and build at the same time the knowledge that lets it be rec that we learn from it and can share the learnings in very diverse environments. In those notes. Always so well said. Thank you, Judy. Forrest. Yeah, thank you. Um, to respond to a couple different things, I think what you brought up, Pete, was really good because um, Jordan, as soon as it went into kind of looking at putting some kind of list together or whatever that might be, in my mind, I started backing up to go, well, what is it going to be used for? How is it going to be used? What, what is, so knowing that there's that big picture envelope and figuring, okay, where does that show up in right timing, right order? It's more saying that, again, we have all these resources and such. And there's more detail about that, including Jamaica in work with uh, George and I a couple of years ago put in substantial number of hours already putting this kind of stuff together. So again, it's needing a bucket um, uh, to turn it into a deliverable that can be used by others within the context that it's intended. Um, the other thing I just wanted to um, 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 point as a positive societal thing happening in the United States right now that got announced just a couple of weeks ago and then to the try to underline what this might mean so we think about it a little bit. So the USDA, which had talked about putting in a billion dollars to launch carbon uh, partnerships for carbon smart commodities actually announced 2.8 billion across 70 different projects that will be paid out without um, match over the next three to five years that's going to pull in a lot more than the few hundred organizations that are already involved with it. So there's a whole thing about that's a whole ecosystem that's being launched with nearly $3 billion of cash that somebody didn't have to turn around and go get investment money to do with a lot of colleagues that I know that have the organizations around to do that, that seem to me to be potentially very connected to the kinds of things we're talking about. But if there isn't the energy to kind of think about what's it take to appropriately and realistically connect with the folks, particularly early on, before they stabilize into, okay, these are the partnerships, these are the people, this is the direction, this is what's happening. Um, so that's just a window of opportunity that just happens to be uh, crit prox right now or critical proximity. Yeah. You know, one of the things which is what we had talked about some time ago, um, maybe a month, uh, six weeks or so, that in a conversation with uh, Jonathan, and I think it was part of the maybe the resourcing group or something like that, is really we are lacking, and going back to what Kilo said, I, I think that really what's happening in a good part of right now is since we don't have any methodology of really tracking the investment of energy that's being put in by all the various different people in any form whatsoever, we're trading the energy of love. Essentially, bottom line, that's what's happening. That's the reciprocity that's occurring. We are, we are consuming and trading the energy of love. And so what's that can only go so far without going into transparency that you can actually start to understand where, what are the energy flows that are happening? Where are the, the networks and the patterns of these energy flows uh, happening if we can't map it any place? And so this is why from planetary care's point of view, I ended up with this off the wall kind of hypothesis that you had to start with 
the Constitution already figured out that then people could buy into a methodology. We use profit units and things like this. We use contracts. We use this. Even though we don't have the money, we have a measurement. We have a feeling. We have a trust that's developed yeah. among all the different people. Not to say that this is the way that, that Lionsburg or any of this should go, just that in a current method, um, um, there's a it feels like that that would add a lot of value, I guess is what I'm saying, is if there was a method that uh, would be reasonably figured out. What that method is, I, I, I don't necessarily, <laughs> I think that takes some people to think about and to turn around and to put together and find a, a method that makes sense for the group. But the value of keeping track then is much more close to a healthy ecosystem. Because a healthy ecosystem is exchanging energy and molecules and, and, and consumption and whatever it is that's going on. And so that's automatically nature's keeping track of it. And so we want to create some level of visibility for ourselves. So I'll complete with that. Thanks. Thanks, Bruce. Yeah, I could easily see when we um, so Judy, to quickly go back to your comment with the, um, just want to clarify any misunderstanding around the quarterly meetings. Um, what I was referring to is, is in the organizations I've run in the past, we've done a specific type of quarterly meeting to really center in and make sure everybody's aligned on clarity on the next 90 days, how it leads into one and three years out and to make sure there's understanding on the targets. And then the, the weekly meetings are executing to those priorities. So I wasn't proposing that, that we go, but just that we try to have a very focused type of meeting that would really align with clarity and, and force to what you were saying. Um, what, I, what I learned and what I think everything I've read has said is typically, Pete, I think you said this um, a couple of weeks ago, maybe we should try to focus on a very few things and actually get them done, you know, instead of having a lot of things that we don't get done. That's the basic failure pattern is that you pick seven quarterly priorities and then you don't accomplish them as opposed to picking two or three and, and nailing them each time. So Forrest, um, from, I, I could easily say what, see what you're talking about on, on how we start the measurement and exchange um, being a, or, or at least that basic measurement of energy flows connected to those priorities being one of the a few things we try to tackle in our next cycle. So we can talk about that maybe next week and see if, it, see if it's a priority. So thanks for bringing that in. Jason? Yeah, so I think um, what Judith said about scale is interesting. And then I think about Estonia having um, interesting scale um, because it's, you know, it it's it's big enough, but not too big. You know, and I and what we're doing in in Appleton is, you know, and and we're basically the Fox Cities is about two hundred and fifty thousand people. And um, what that does is it compresses the amount of complexity um, down to three hospital systems, um, four foundations. Um, six local businesses that are a billion dollars plus. Um, and so it starts to create capacity to um, create alignment. And so um, my couple of reflections over the past couple of weeks and what people have been saying, um, I got a chance to go to the Balkans last week. So I spent seven days in six countries and I could, and all the countries were small, <laughs> um, you know, from, Slovenia to Montenegro to Croatia to Serbia to Hungary and uh, and Bosnia and what is what is interesting is thinking about the long arc of a city state um, it's not World War II it's 29 BC and the resilience of yeah. uh, culture yeah. over time yeah. to persevere as a Bosnian over basically 20 to 30 occupations over the period of 2000 years, um, has, there's something to say about that locality, that ability to, to hold a space, hold a culture, hold a, um, a, a, an aspiration. 
so so that was my reflection of seeing those different cultures and they are all different <laughs> which is quite interesting too um the the work we're doing um locally is becoming interesting for a few few reasons one it's going local and and national so for example we are building a community data hub aligned by all community i'd say all most community stakeholders um, to have one data infrastructure that's creating a pull for a national set of people to run a grant to really create a standard structure for data infrastructure for communities so the pull comes up but the work is actually in the in the locus um, and so it's the connections between the national or the global or this group in each of our own domains where we're doing our work and how we learn from each other one of the big things that we're struggling with in the uh, generative local community prototype is understanding and testing governance structures and so we kind of understand how to create local ecosystems that can cash flow positive and we can kind of understand how to engage um, local businesses in reinforcing and creating uh, positive cash flow that reinforces the cash flow that's there we're trying to figure out is how we create that infrastructure or the governance that enables the people who are working in this generative local community to benefit from it so yeah. i can that that's like so if i had to ask i'm like okay that's where that's where you know we're looking at mondragon cooperative model because it seems to work um but are there better models um so as we just think through those type of things that's kind of where my head has been over the last couple of weeks and it's exciting to see the local the national and the ability to think about how we might experiment across context So Jason, um, you you may or may not know that um, several years ago when we were starting out on this, that legal and governance piece became apparent that it would be basically the sticking point of the thing that we didn't know how to do yet as a species. Um, so in our pathway to set up um, to set up Lionsburg, we searched the world for examples. Mondragon was brought to my attention and I ended up taking two week long trips with the leading US professor who spent the last 40 years on the Mondragon model and groups of grad students over there. Um, Bill came on one of those two trips for a week. So we um, dove very, very deeply in person over multiple trips into that model. We have personal relationships with um, key executives and wisdom holders mm -hmm. of that whole system. Um, and for very specific reasons, we we thought that we needed to take a step beyond it for um, for very specific reasons. So I'd be delighted um, to collaborate on on that and share some of that. And with this question of of what are we doing, um, setting up those fractal nodes of governance that can be networked together in ecosystems that can flow resources and I mean, you've obviously seen how that Montrecon model got built out over time. Um, one way to think about where I think we're going is that that's, that's a small example of what simply needs to be done. Um, and there's been reasons why Mondragon kind of capped out at that, um, that $13 billion and staying local in Bosque and Spain um, cap. And so we've had some very smart minds thinking about why they hit that cap. Why is it not work to export it around the world and in developing countries? And what can we do to move beyond that? So let's let's talk about that. Great. Thank you. All right. I'm going to weave one more thread there before we go to Wendy, which is to say that um, the other person, other than um, a couple of us that are on this call, that have maybe thought about that the deepest. Um, is is Graham Boyd, who was uh, well. I'm going to nodding to Forrest, obviously, um, and then uh, so probably Bill and I and Forrest and Graham Boyd are among the people that I've found at least that have thought deepest about this next generation of ecosystem governance and Mondragon and what's beyond it. Um, so I think that's part of why the universe had Graham and I just spend a week together in Estonia because we got hours and hours and hours to really dive deep into our last years of work and, and align. And we very, very deeply aligned on what I think are the principles of that. And so I think there's going to be a match um, across. And so maybe we can cut a couple years off your roadmap and have a prototype 
Jason. All right. Um, Wendy, hello. Um, so just saying that the retreat that I went to, and I'll just say the Kinevan retreat um, in August was exactly on that topic. Um, so we've got a group of people who are very broad thinkers um, who we could use as a reference group since everyone was working on quite um, solid and multiple levels of thinking around um, you know, governance and decision making and what makes that hang together. So I could use that community of practice to, um, to bring in and invite them since they all came with that theme in mind. Um, and that's still fairly fresh. And so there's an opportunity there to have, you know, 30 people who are familiar with the Kinevan framework talking about governance, looking critically at some of these systems, knowing that there's some probably little flourishes that haven't necessarily been added, but could quite easily be added, partly because there are people who've got existing projects. Um, and you could say, well, you know, how would this model work and actually get a bit of um, good nuanced thinking. And I think Dave would be up for that as well. So, um, and the timing is right. We've only just recently come together. So okay. you're getting the breadth of a, a number of people and a specific event that's already got a lot of inputs that I could look at. Um, and we've got all the transcripts and such from that, or they're coming. So we've actually got real data around what was discussed as opposed to we had a good meeting and it was interesting. We think there's some good options. <laughs> Yeah, great. Um, Thanks. Yeah. So I, I, I need the link for Mondragon and I need to have a community here for me to come up to speed with that would be my ask. Okay, so um, Wendy, I would be, I can't tell you how delighted I'd be to have that community of practice to um, exchange ideas with and see if we can come to a shared wise right model. Um, for anybody who is not aware of it, Open Future Coalition is having a summit October 18th, which is like three weeks out. One of the biggest things they've asked from me is whether we're far enough along that we can finish articulating kind of the governance interoperability and agreements among the Federation. Um, so I've been up, um, I've been spending a lot of time at, on that. Uh, so at 1.30 this morning, uh, just grinding trying to get that that whole thing so i would really really love wendy if that group was willing to be able to take and jason like let's take all that work and what bill and i have done and see if we can bring that together and come out with a really wise distilled set of principles um, that would solve issues for jason i think it would solve issues for us and it would be our greatest gift i think to the network right now Okay, um, Wendy, you're on, you're on mute. What hasn't been done from that meeting, and um, Pete and I put a bid in for it, but that the, the transcripts themselves are actually an, an important input because it's what's sitting between the speakers um, and the nuances, that, that's where the gold is. So any particular speaker will have a particular viewpoint but what's said collectively between them is important. So I might need a little bit of Pete's help, but Pete's not so available at the moment. So that would just be a bit of tech support, I know. <laughs> you got a lot happening on your plate, Pete. Um, so anyway, 18th of October is only two weeks away and it's a critical two weeks to get that information going. So yeah, there's a little bit of a community practice that might need it around that, just to help do my little bit well. Okay. Beautiful. Thank you, Wendy. Um, Kilo. I'm sorry, sorry, Kilo, Kilo, can I just say something? Um, so what I'm wanting to say, and you guys are going to start to see me choking a little bit on the load here, but um, so like Wendy and Pete, that's, that's obviously an incredible opportunity to bring those streams together with what Bill and I have done and to the Open Future Coalition thing, merging with Jason like that. This is what the network needs right now is the theme, UN, Estonia, everything. So um, 
obviously what we're dealing with is us not being that mature of an organization yet and having like teams assigned to schedule all these things. So I'm going to say what I was going to say, which is that I would really, really like to collaborate on this the next two weeks. Um, and hopefully we can figure out how to be patient with each other and see if we can, we can actually do it. So, all right. Sorry. Thank you, Keith. I just, there, it's like, there's so many amazing, valuable threads here, like we've been talking about, and we need to develop the resources and capacity to advance all these. Okay. Yeah. Keith, thank you. And, and listening to what you just said, really, my, my heart truly goes out to you for holding so many things and jumping in so many things. And that, I, I don't know how, but I invite all of us to think of how we can help or how we can engage. And also for you to think, how can, can anything be shared? And how can that happen while leaving you your role? and also just helping because you keep getting more and more. And I start getting concerned when I see that from the side. Because there's one of you and not that many hours in a day and not that many days in a week. That's not what I raised my hand to say, by the way, I do have other things to say, but that's what I want to <laughs> say just right after this, this exchange, right? And um, so what I raised my hand to say it was after when Jason, when you were speaking, which I thought was really interesting, I'd love to hear more about, you know, what you're engaged with and what you're doing and, and those trips and such. And so the, the dinner that we had, and that's a dinner that we had without you, Jordan, because you were on the plane at that point, but it was sort of right before I left. And it was with a guy who was a former minister of entrepreneurship and information technology also former acting foreign minister and is in the leadership of one of the main parties. And it's a center-right party they call Reform Party. And they've been credited with a lot of sort of progressive things in Estonia, but, you know, also gets land for some of the social issues that, that come with those types of approaches. And so we were speaking to... Um, we were speaking to the notion of, you know, what could be done in Estonia and at what level it could be done and to Graham's work and to just sort of what we could represent of our joint interests. And we ended up with this potential vision for what if, and this was kind of economic and business based, partly because Graham was in the conversation and he's very much about building businesses and business ecosystems. But what if we find this highly aligned way of building, let's call them more enlightenment businesses and communities and ecosystems where all stakeholders are benefiting in the value that's created and the value and the benefit that's created using these multiple capitals. And, you know, there's different ways of structuring and corporation and governance that can get to there. But the big, big picture behind that was Estonia is a small country, 1.3 million people. And if you were to be able to activate the population into understanding and recognition, if you were to be able to activate a larger share of the population to recognize the value of creating a bigger pie for everyone and then get them activated into themselves, between themselves, creating a bigger pie, there would be great value to that. In a small country where GDP is only $36 billion, look up Apple's quarterly profits and revenues, it puts it in perspective. But if you can get the people to build a bigger pie together, you can probably also dividend the benefits of the greater pie. Even just a couple of unicorns on the context of a country as small as Estonia lead to meaningful checks for majority of the population in a country where median salary is about 20,000 euros. And that's kind of a thinking where on one hand, you're talking about structures and systems and business building governance and business to create value in this aligned, less wasteful way. And on the other hand, you're talking about emergent and well, you're talking about activation of people, education, engagement, collaboration, but really activation of people both into understanding the value of creating something together for the joint benefit, as well as recognition of how to do that, which is trainable and educatable. 
where you can, you know, there, there, there's a lot of initiative in Estonia. So if they see the juice bars are in across the border, they'll start juice bars and Pilates, you know, and then and whatever, right? But if you were to be able to do sort of yet higher level initiatives to create that greater value and get more of the population to think along the lines of jointly creating greater value, now you really have a potential engine for value and benefit. And if you then have a structure to share it also between the different stakeholders that are go all the way down from the state nation level to you know, organizations and communities and then whatever systems to the people, then you have a potential future vision with an activated population. And all of a sudden, it doesn't feel like you have 1.3 million people. You also multiply your population. If you can activate the population and activate the system, and you now have sort of production or productivity of value and the greater pie, if you will, at, at, at the level of a you know, potentially larger country. So that was part of the conversation that we were having. And all these themes that we're talking about here, actually, one way or another, belong. So that's why I, I don't have a very concrete point, but it feels relevant and resonant to speak that out. And again, it has the part of the systems and processes and you know all that sort of tangible nuts and bolts, as well as the people and collaboration and emergence and ability to connect to the, you know, what I think of as a field of knowing, because I don't value knowledge, I value the ability to access that place where knowing is between us. And that's teachable. So key to what you're saying, I think, goes back to this idea of a prototype of all these different elements that could be deployed in any place, right? And so, um, you know, Jason, you said you have a a reasonably sized 250,000 community person community, let's say, and the biggest issue is these issues of governance, and is it the Mondragon model or something beyond, or what? What's worked, right? I think you're speaking to that basic same thing at the Estonia level, and it goes from how you engage the, the human beings and the hearts and minds and the souls in how you, into how you train and how to deploy these interconnected ecosystems that help every individual organization and community develop towards their potential, right? And then it's the interrelationship of all that that's the magic. So I think that's... Um, that's all been the heart of what we're hopefully moving towards. Um, so it's right, right on you. I think that's. And, and if I may add just one very practical little tactical thing, but I think it's politically useful for people, which is when people start understanding that, especially in a very small country, playing with taxes and regulations only gives you so much. In the US, you can get a lot because a percent is a huge number here. In Estonia, it's not. And so the relative value of creating more together or, or making the pie bigger or finding what is value and creating value becomes more visibly into focus. So it also translates to dollars and cents or whatever the currency is. Okay, Bill. Hi, thanks. As um, many of you have probably been experiencing, I'm sitting here with ever more thoughts going through my head. And um, so I'll share a couple of them and, and offer something in, in conclusion. My wife and I are on Cape Cod this week and we stopped to buy some groceries on the way up uh, just south of the Cape. And there was an old man. He looked like he was 85. He was so bent over um, that his back was almost parallel to the ground. And he had to look at you like this. And he was working at the grocery store begging groceries. And I couldn't speak and Rose just stepped ahead and started to graciously help bag groceries, grab bags from another aisle. It was kind of late at night. And we smiled at him and thanked him and just kind of tried to make it a, 
a nice moment. But as we walked away, we were just speechless. And it just almost, I can hardly talk about it without tears. How can we have a, how can we have people who have to work at that stage in life? And I'm not saying that to blame anybody, but to point out something that Jesus talked about, the Pharisees said, well, who's my neighbor? They didn't want to love their neighbor, so they challenged him. And he said, well, let me tell you a story. Or maybe it was the disciple said, who's my neighbor? Can't, can't remember. And he told the story of the Good Samaritan, a man who, unlike the priests that walked by the injured victim of robbers, stopped and took care of him and brought him to an inn and paid for him to stay there while he recovered. So the question is, your neighbor is, the answer is who, who you run into who has a need. That's your neighbor, whoever it is. And in our modern interconnected world, sadly, in a, and maybe catastrophically, we have neighbors who are everywhere in the world. I am, I see the need, I'm aware of it, and I wonder how can I help this need, or I harden myself to it. That's the difficulty of seeing world needs. So the challenge is how do you aggregate resources to reach out to the larger meta needs without neglecting, of course, the elderly person at your left hand or your child at your right? So that got me thinking about what is um, needed to make things work between people here Civil law is the balancing of competing social values. Criminal law is different, but civil law finds this balance. You can't balance social needs unless you have either an imposition of say a zoning law, which is supposedly done for the benefit of both sides of an equation, or you have a meeting of the minds and humility and communication and understanding. If I don't understand your needs, I can't defer to them. So thinking about collaborating to meet social needs and about neighbors, that calls for concerted action in systems, right? This is all elementary, but these thoughts are going through my head. And so now that the theme has come up, we need to know each other. We can't just talk in meta terms. We, we need to actually do something. And what is Lionsburg all about and all that? I just wanted to volunteer myself as a, a point of reference or conversation. I've gotten to know several of you on a one-on-one -on -one basis and we've had great conversations and I deeply appreciate that. I, I learned so much, but I might be able to offer some insight into some of the thinking that's gone on behind the whole Lionsburg project, what some of the practicalities of are, what some what can happen, what what are some elements that we see as very approachable. I I hate to see people that I love and start in the very learning to care for to be not understanding something that I think we need to understand. So if I can be of any help, I am totally open and I want to have conversations with whoever I can in this group. And so just want to lay that out there <laughs> because if, if we can connect as friends, I think it's easier for us to balance our efforts to meet social needs in that, that point of their overlap. Because if competing social values are met by isolated siloed people, there won't be collaboration. And then one group's effort to meet one need is gonna be competing for the resources to meet that need. So the connection between people that are friends facilitates us understanding each other and compromising to come up with something that works for all of us. But it also happens on this nonprofit to nonprofit, business to business, country to country basis. If we don't understand one another, um, we can't come to the point of meeting social needs. Thanks. Thanks, Bill.
want to um, just add to what Bill just said. Um, I feel bad that um, this far in, there's um, not as much clarity and alignment that we could have around things that seem so evident um, in my mind. So I just really like to um, encourage people that Bill might be able to pick up on my inadequacies of explaining some of the inception of this um, and all that's available and possible. So thanks, Bill, for. But it 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 takes a little bit of. Um, I don't know. Yeah, probably, uh, you know, Bill and I have been talking about this for five years and we still, I think every week, Bill, we've probably come to at least one or two points we're not fully sunk up consciously on yet. Um, so it's, it's like, it takes a little bit of commitment. And for anybody who's trying to deal with systems change on how you meet maybe the most critical decade in human history at the edge of a total com like quantum shift of a complex system, that involves all humanity and all the living system in a total realignment. It's like not something that um, can just be reduced really simply. And so, um, but, I, but I think there's a very pragmatic way that if we were to just act out what we've done already and everything we said today, it's like that, that whole thing starts to get realigned. Bill, thanks for your willingness to hang in there and, and um, chat with people for us. Yeah, thank you. And uh, um, just a couple quick points, kind of cycling back to um, internal practicality of, of Meta Project and Lionsburg. And that is in thinking about on the one component that was mentioned about tracing energy flow by some methodology. But also then recognizing then, okay, then what is a process that we might actually start experimenting with to, as a group, choose where the energy flow is to go? And even if we're using a point system that is, however it's, it's put together, so um, like that, but there will come a point where there's a bucket of funds and those funds will be inadequate because that's the nature of it. And or they will be inadequate to fulfill all the desires of the projects that can be brought forward by the people that is needed internally and externally to want to do. So that's a, that's a skill set to actually that takes practice and things like that. We're actually at a place where we might be able to begin that skill set of the working together and, and, and making this kind of decision. And this goes back to the only piece of software platform that I'm aware of, and maybe there's others, is CoBudget. And CoBudget is actually designed exactly for this purpose and to allow groups to be able to allocate resources. So I just wanted to add that. And then the second component that feels really valuable as an early receiver of resources is um, someone that really worked closely with you, Jordan, and closely with anybody else that might be a, 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 a point of bringing in this energy, but it's particularly you right now, that can turn around and on a fairly frequent basis because of the nature of how rapidly things are changing, produce through just conversation and very simple editing, whether it is a, a audio or whether it's an audio video, some kind of short thing that starts to encapsulate the various different components. So sometimes it might be you giving it, it might be Kilo giving it, it might be Bill giving it, whoever that is that goes into our Lionsburg um, YouTube channel and is able for those that have the desire to pick up on that stuff, even if it's two weeks later or a month later, all of a sudden, oh, now I'm attracted. Now I want to go catch up on these various different pieces and not have to try and figure out where that is in one of yeah. these long meetings. Um, so those are the two points I wanted to offer. Thanks, Forrest. 
what, what you just said is a very, um, it's a relatively simple pragmatic thing that would be very easily easy to handle with a very minor amount of support is that um, that stream of, of those things. So thanks for continuing to bring that in. Jonathan. <clears throat> um, I hear the word love a lot and it excites me because it uh, matches something I'm heartbroken over about the human race being so dominated by profit motive and selfishness and um, kind of hmm, I want to open the question or focus on the question that seems to be coming up here which is do we want to convert love into fiat is there some way we can encourage love by paying for it? And this sounds like a utopian and ridiculous idea, oh, I, I presume. But you see, we're throwing a lot of energy into this. And um, if we... Hmm, if we can investigate how to um, nurture love and um, fabricate a structure that allows love to thrive, then people who join are going to go, oh my God, this is different. This is exactly what the human race needs. Um, thank you. Jonathan, the people writing have been tempting to a posits that if there was a single overarching and uniting design criteria for the new world that we're trying to co-create, it's love. And that uh, that's not only maybe the cardinal value through which you could derive all other values that flow from it, but that that value should actually be the basis for all exchange and allocation of energy in the successor system, right? I mean, it's like if we were to say that simply, a complete alignment, realignment of the flow of value with consciousness rooted in love would cause everything else to fall into place. So it's... Um, Thank you. It, it would create utopia. It's not utopian, and it must be done. Um, so thanks for saying that. Thanks, you give me goosebumps, dude. Um, sorry, can you start again? Sounds mute. Sounds mute. Uh, thanks. Uh, uh, thank you, Jonathan. That was uh, lovely. I liked it. Um, Uh, with my consulting hat on, uh, uh, I, I think what we, I, I, I'm going to make a diagnosis kind of, or a suggested diagnosis, which I think is um, we're doing too much work individually and not enough work uh, together. Um, and maybe that's the phase we're in, um, and that's fine, but pretending that we're working together when we're working individually is is a, it's a conflict right it's 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 a wish that we're not fulfilling and then that makes everybody sad um so someday we'll be working together on stuff and um uh, jordan i want to suggest an example this is a really difficult example i think uh, but the ofc summit october 18th um, I would love for you, I, I would love for us, I would love for us to knock it out of the park, have three or four of us there, have a beautiful presentation about Lionsburg and the Matter Project, yada, yada. We're not mature enough for that. Having you do it by yourself matures your participation in it and it leaves the rest of us out. 
Um, and maybe it's the time for that. Maybe, you know, maybe you need to sleep four hours a night for another couple of weeks and, you know, kind of nail it out of the, you know, knock it out of the park. That's going to create a big imbalance in where we are, right? You're going to be way ahead of us and we're going to be way behind you and we won't have participated in it. So I'm not suggesting one course or another, but we're caught in this bind where we want to work together and we are just not working together, which again is fine if that's where we want to be. But if and when we want, if, if and when we're going to be productive, we're going to have to slow down. This is the really hard part, right? We're going to have to slow down and everybody's going to have to figure out how to do things together that are uncomfortable and not, you know, not feeling like, you know, it's like, Jordan, why don't you do this part? Pete, why don't you do that part? Bill, why don't you do that part? Because I don't know how to do it. That's, that's the definition of not doing it together, right? So someday we'll probably work together. I would love that. Until then, we're not working together, even if we all occupy the same space for a couple hours a week. Um, there's a saying, slow is smooth, smooth is fast. We're at that point where we're trying to go as fast as possible. And to do that, we're going to have to slow down and work together smoothly. And then we can proceed with alacrity fast. You're beautiful, Pete. Thank you. And we're coming up to almost two thirty, so we'll go cue the windy, Michael. What a call! I'm definitely feeling it. I raised my hands when uh, Jonathan. Uh, mentioned the uh, love is fiat and also just speaking about it and we've moved uh, through other things now but it's only getting kind of richer and harder right because i think it's a great call but it's also hard and i feel it and speaking of love and using it and speaking it into space and jordan I don't have the quote of what you said, but you said it really beautifully. And I, you know, I think that belongs in on the front page somewhere as a snippet too, as, as a place to come from. And it's not, you know, utopian. And I don't, on one hand, everything in me wants to speak more into being and into reality, into articulation, into recognition, into visibility in every space, but especially productive, progressive spaces where I believe something can happen for the better future. The value and the practicality of different forms, many forms of love and how to, you know, all the how to's about it and that off about it. And on the other hand, it makes me shake in my boots. And just this morning, I was having a call with someone who's a, who's a very wise person. And he was kind of advising and admonishing me to do the hardest thing. And the hardest thing is fully embody, fully embody being who I am and being where I am, including the feelings and including whatever uh, unfinished businesses and you know conflicts and all of that not run into escaping and not run into projects and not run into rationalizing some really good at reasoning and i think unless we are unless we are ready to have our hearts completely broken we probably can't really talk about bringing love beyond whatever we're able to embody and hold it. doesn't mean I don't want to. I want to. Now I'm, I'm, my heart's already breaking and broken. But it's, I'm feeling it like this is so much what's happening. 
And I'm having that conversation with my friends, you know, with my girlfriends, with my guy friends. So there's something in the air that's having that happen anyway. Somebody's going to be using it. Maybe it might, might as well be us. I just want to speak that, you know, we're all asking for heartbreak if we are asking to go deeper and recognize and use and abide in that. It's not a reason not to do it. In fact, it might be the reason to articulate practicalities around it. This is what you do. This is how you do. This is what you do in community. This is how you, I don't know, modularize and processize it for other people, right? But I just want to speak it out here. And, you know, whether we turn it into currency or not, I mean, that's that becomes just a small question because the bigger question is what happens to us and how are we going to be with each other? And with ourselves, if I try to embody everything that gets stirred in this meeting, I'm I'm going to be running so fast because I don't think I cannot run. But it's a good, you know, it's a good heartbreak, right? So anyway, I'll leave you with that. Thanks so much, Peter. Okay, we are um, we're at two thirty. So we need to, um, so Michael and Wendy, we will um, hear your comments over coffee, but I just want to break for anybody who needs to jump off the call. Um, thank you so much. So, so next week we'll be starting a new six week cycle, um, building on all of this. I'm really, really excited. Um, and I think if we really, really took seriously everything we've discussed today, um, especially over the last few minutes, um, go a long way so anyway i want to just kind of uh acknowledge anybody that needs to jump off the call and um over coffee not part of the formal meeting um wendy and michael i'd love to hear your comments with anybody else that can stay on go ahead michael okay um yeah, um, I, to a little bit uh, to what Pete was saying and and some of what um, some of what was discussed uh, yesterday in the social dimensions conversation and um, I, I think a lot of this kind of false start feeling and and where do we put our resources sources and what is people working alone and what is us working together um, stems from the lack of definition between just you know how our our individual parts and separate efforts and those of people who aren't in this room fit into this movement and the difference between this movement and Lionsburg, which is, is an individual effort within this movement. And, you know, it's a distinction. I mean, I, I can remember, Jordan, at times you saying that those two terms were interchangeable. And, you know, I, at, at various times I've pushed back on that just because I think it makes it hard. You know, Lionsburg is a thing, you know, has a lot of structure and um, is something that I think many of us want to support and want to see flourish without knowing how or even if we would fit into it or under it <laughs> and and the the meta project the movement i mean this was some stuff that i was I was posting in chat too and and also stuff i said before and sorry if i'm being redundant but it, it just seems to me that that 
that movement is what we you know wish we could write a constitution for and we're just not there and we don't have the right to in a way or a declaration or start a petition or have a list of bullet points and you know it's it's audacious of of us to think that we can but at the same time we are part of a massive 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 you know group of hundreds of thousands millions maybe billions that has the right to and the need to sort of define that that movement so separating ourselves from that uh purview while acknowledging the efforts we all want to make in that direction as individuals as companies nonprofits loose groups and 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 say that we're all here as representatives of those things to help each other be part of the greater meta project um doesn't preclude relationships to Lionsburg. Um, and, you know, some of us are doing things that might relate to Lionsburg, some of us aren't. Other entities exist that are more mature, that are part of this movement. You know, Future Capital, the UN, you know, uh, you know, the nation of Estonia. I mean, all of these sovereign entity entities and people are have roles in this greater, larger movement. And if we're here, if our meetings are um, as I don't know what, members, supporters, consultants, I can think of a lot of different roles to Lionsburg, the entity, or, or well, or not. Uh, I mean, I, I, think, I think we have to define somehow when we're doing that and when we're not. And it's fine. I mean, I, I like love everything that I've seen and heard and feel like there are lots of specifics about Lionsburg that I totally could get behind. And um, at the same time, if we're talking about the movement that we've called the Meta Project, I, I think it's not too meta, as Pete was saying, to be like figuring out how we can fit with other people on that. Um, but we're in no position to organize it and and. be flag bearers I, I i sorry i'm I, I feel like i'm not really able to articulate this but i i think the separation of the two things and where we can be practical at our own level of existing organizations and individuals versus um you know being the ones to to herald and kickstart this movement. I think we have a, a problem. Uh, we, have a, we have a lack of clarity um, there that we need to get clear, separate, and do nameable things. So, yeah. I was probably more articulate in the chat on some of that, but. Here we go. On to the next. <laughs> Thank you for your voice, Michael.
Yeah, I really appreciate that. Uh, appreciate the care you took to express that. Could I offer a comment or an observation? Because this is such a wonderful group of people, first of all. Um, and the diversity in the group is high because of different life experiences, different core trainings and so forth. And it's beautiful to watch and at the same time challenging because of the width and breadth and depth of perspective that individuals bring to the topic at hand. And then multiply that by about a billion and you get to the full potential scope of meta. And so on the one hand, I think we should feel good that we're experiencing learning pains right now <laughs> because that's part of the operational growth of an ecosystem of people at whatever scale. At the same time, my sensibilities would suggest that we have to be somewhat reasoned and concrete about what is realistic for us to try to do toward the much, much larger goal, or it can devolve into frustration and disengagement. And this is far too worthy to allow that to happen. I don't have a solution at this point, but I would invite everyone to think about some of those questions over the next week. And perhaps we can, I don't know whether we wanna use the Mattermost or some other process to share some of those thoughts in, an, in a framework because it could easily turn into quite a lot of reading. <laughs> and that would be wonderful and frightening at the same time. <laughs> And so I think that the sentiment I hear is everyone wants to help with this. And the frustration is that there's so many dimensions, it's hard to know specifically what any one person can do. Or even if each of us had an army behind us, what we would try to persuade our army to do. And maybe legion is a better word than army, but I, I guess, <laughs> I think, I'm both heartened and a bit frustrated <laughs> as a general sentiment to what we're experiencing. Um, but I would share that this is a common behavior in evolving groups of people. And the bigger the project, the more complex the patterns are that evolve. And what I would invite each person to do, if you're willing, is to think about questions like, you know, who could I help in general? What could I do to help? How would I know if I was successful? Those sort of reflective questions that each of us probably practice when we think about taking a new job or joining a new organization. You know, is this worth my time? Does it fit with what I can do? Or will it frustrate me? But I think if each of us did a little bit of that self-reflection in addition to what we're already doing, and I'm not suggesting that we're not all doing some of it anyway, but there might be a path that would become more apparent to us on what things we could reasonably do now and how many more millions of people need to be involved to do more. I think I'll stop there. <laughs> okay, let's go to Jonathan and then I'm gonna make a final comment and then unless any Nobody else has anything. We're in an amazing space to kind of hold Judy's, uh, Michael's statement and Judy's inquiry. And maybe just let that rest um, until next week. So, Jonathan, you have the final mm -hmm. word from the group. Wow. Um, so, I love the idea that Judas is proposing of selecting some good questions and then really thinking about it because we generate really good questions. And um, I, I wanna 
see us gain the ability to follow through on those. And was wondering if during our retrospective, we as a group could pick our three favorite questions and, you know, agree. Yeah, these three are the best. Something like that. Because um, this, this meeting and others like it are so precious. And one way to move them forward is to narrow our focus or where our thinking might go in the intervening weeks. Thanks for letting me off of that. Let's take, um, before I make a final comment, let's do a quick waterfall. Um, let's take a couple of minutes and respond to uh, Jonathan's and Judy's nod on the questions. Um, and just give everybody a chance to just write any questions you have into the chat, like what would be the wisest right questions for us to be thinking about at this juncture? And maybe we can uh, distribute those as we think and head into next week. So let's take two or three minutes and just think about the wisest right questions we could ask ourselves this week. All right. Are we doing on questions? Would anybody like more time? So, Wendy, Michael, you guys good? All right, let's hit go. Give us all a second to uh, review those and then final comment will close out here. Thanks, Pete. Okay, um, closing comment is I think that how, um, first of all, thank you. This was um, an immensely rich and deep discussion. Uh, I'm really, really grateful. It's uh, I think exactly what a retrospective should kind of be. So thank you. Um, where Michael and Judy left off, and where a lot of our conversation pointed to, I think is exactly what we need to grapple with as we head into the next six weeks. And the question that I wrestled with for 
many, many years as we couldn't find a place to push on for the meta project, let's say, in its abstract and universal form. I, I went through, through actually years with coaches trying to figure out what could we go push on that if we drove it to its logical end with every bit of resources and relationships and energy we could possibly muster would accomplish the total set of global goals and forge the kind of future that we all desire and we couldn't find anything. And so we can get lost in these abstract brands um, and we can wonder what a meta project is and we can wonder what Alliansburg is and whatever. And one way to shatter that is to just realize that they're all simple inventions and words of people in this room to try to communicate something. Um, so there is no abstraction like it's us, <laughs> it's us and we're here. And um, I tried for years to figure out what to put weight behind so that billions of people wouldn't like suffer and starve and maybe have a chance of gathering whatever allies we could to try to do a little better than what's happening. And um, the best mythical thing I could come up with um, for a very practical structure to deal with government cash flows, philanthropic cash flows, investment cash flows, and create space to actually track energy like Taurus was advocating for, write checks, like taking philanthropic funds, taking investment funds, and actually act out the propositions. Uh, we had to pick something. And so we sat there until something called Lionsburg dropped. And recognizing that mythical names don't work and people need very pragmatic descriptions. We, you know, sat and wrote for, I sat and wrote, we sat and wrote for years until we decided to try something like Meta Project and something like Metagame for trying to figure out what we might all play in together. So I think as we start the next cycle, <laughs> we should grapple with what Michael just put forward and what Judy just put forward and go, okay, well, if we're not gonna take responsibility for this because there's some them out there that it's like, whose job is that? Whose responsibility is it? Where are they? Cause I need to go find them. Um, but I've been looking for many, many years now and I find that they're on this call and they're out there in all of our different relationships. and. I can't find anything to go push on. I can find thousands or millions of amazing leaders and organizations I'd like to support and empower and resource and equip with tools and technology and knowledge and relationships and like so many brilliant heroic things happening that need to happen and need to be swimming in resources that they don't have right now. I can find those and I think we should find those and we should connect up and empower them. And I feel like until we find the them out there that has this handled, um, it's we should act as if it's up to us as uncomfortable as that is and figure out how we go from who we are to who we need to become and who else needs to be here. and. So that's, I guess, my final word is I just feel like I can't, you know, get up and look myself in the mirror every morning unless I act as if that was our responsibility until such a time as, you know, we find some them out there who's got the grand challenges and global goals covered so we can relax. <laughs> but until then, it's like, I think it's our job. Um, and it's a big risk to not act as if that were true. So Michael, I wanna thank you again for the deep, deep care with which you articulate those things on your heart that are so true and so important. It's really, really important and really, really valuable. And I appreciate the care that you take to express those things because it illuminates a lot. So I'm really, really excited about Q4. Um, I'm going to spend a lot of time with the notes from today. Um, 
I took a lot of notes and I apologize. I maybe wasn't doing a good job of being very collaborative with that, but I think we got some incredible content. Um, um, Pete, would you like to, would you be willing to drop that onto the wiki? Yep, I will. Okay. Um, I'll also post uh, links to the Metamos, uh, Town Square, um, okay. Meta Project Town Square. Yeah, I think these notes are like super valuable. Um, and then I really look forward to next week. And then, um, yeah, we've got lots of adjustments. And thank you guys so much for hanging in there. I realize that my leadership and communications have been um, inadequate the last few weeks. And um, I'm, I'm deeply grateful for just uh, hanging in there through this formative process while we bootstrap up. So deeply, deeply appreciated. Love and appreciate each of you. This was a really rich call. So, all right, we're excited. Okay, we'll see you guys Thanks next Thanks everybody. Week. Thank you. Hello. Thanks Jordan. Thank you, everyone. Um, Good meeting. All right. Good right. call. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. Talk soon. Have a great day. Bye. Bye-bye. Mariana.